Now we'd like to welcome Brent Trademan to the stage for our Ask, Us, Ask Me Anything segment. Uh, Brent is a general partner with Phoenix Venture Capital. He's going to talk briefly about what a venture capitalist does and then open up the floor to questions from our partners on the global live stream or here in the audience. Uh, Chloe Evans, who's an important member of the Team Tech, SF, uh, I mean Team Tech Global Leadership Team, will be moderating questions. Thanks, Mark. Um, wow, it's very bright up here. So uh, thanks for having me. And uh, for the folks that don't know what venture capital is, uh, you'll hopefully learn that today. Uh, quick show of hands, who knows or who has heard of venture capital? OK. All right, challenge to the audience. Who can explain what it is in one sentence? Yes. Yeah, that's great. Yep, great. So that, that's, that's pretty spot on. So what we've talked about today and what Saeed kind of said earlier is that there's a lot of companies out there. There's two people with a computer, right? And to accelerate that growth really rapidly and quickly, you need capital behind that, capital, money, fundraising. So that is what a VC does, and you've hit it right, right there, is, is growing a company. So what's super exciting about venture capital, I'll talk to you about it today, is that uh, we take startups, companies that come out of plug and play, Y Combinator, uh, tech stars, great accelerators, or just people with a computer and two programmers, and turn that into the next Dropbox, or into the next PayPal, into the next Google. Uh, and one thing that's interesting that every, all these companies that um, the folks prior have talked about, Cisco, Dropbox, PayPal, uh, Intel, Evernote, they all had venture capital funding at some point along the way. So that, that is just uh, something that it's, it's a lot of folks in the room get because uh, you are here at Teen Tech SF. And um, today, I want to spend a lot of time uh, or opening up for questions, mm -hmm. but I'll show you a couple slides just to give you some idea of what we do at Phoenix. So at, at a high level overview, what we invest in, right? It's, it's disruptive markets, mobile tech, cloud, everything we've talked about earlier today and everything that you've seen around the Bay Area. Uh, what w stages, I won't go into it, but you know, there's seed, there's series A, and there's different financing stages. Um, but really, we look for passionate people. So people like you in the audience, right? In a couple of years, when, when you uh, learn how to code, or you find somebody that knows how to code, maybe you're a business executive, and you want to start a company, you're passionate about it. And we see that in somebody, and we finance that person, okay? And you'll ask a VC, what are the most important things of a startup? And they'll say three things, okay? The people, the people, and the people, right? Everybody has a good idea. Everybody in this room probably has had an idea that they think is great. Maybe it came out a year or two after you thought it was great. Doesn't matter, everybody has an idea. It's who can execute that idea and who's passionate about it, okay? So just to give you an example of some companies we've invested in, uh, Lark, which in 2011, uh, a female CEO came and she said, hey, I want to make a, um, a wearable device. And we said, what, what the heck's a wearable device? It's 2011, if you can believe it's only three years ago. Uh, we said, okay, great, what, what is it? And it's a sleep monitoring device. You put it on your wrist and it's going to be the next thing. Great, we saw the passion in this female CEO, young, early 20s, and we said, great, let's go with it. So we started investing, now we're on the board, we've invested more and more, and we've helped her get into Japan, so the folks on the phone, possibly from Japan today, uh, getting Lark on shelf space in the Best Buy type stores of Japan is what we do. So we help that company grow, we help it accelerate, we help it get into emerging markets is what we do. We also help them get into Apple stores. So now she's kind of pivoted instead of selling hardware because she was that catalyst, as Garov mentioned, is, is very important in that industry. Uh, she was one of the first to get into the Apple store, get on the shelf, very hard to do, and now she's pivoted to be more of a software platform. And now it's gonna be on Samsung's devices uh, moving forward as a, as a software platform for wearables. Rap Genius, has anybody ever heard of Rap Genius or Genius.com? Okay, great. 
so they came out of Y Combinator in 2011, and it's a funny story. We, uh, right after they pitched on a stage like this to a bunch of investors, a couple kids straight out of Princeton and, and worked at Google, and they said, hey, you know what? what we've noticed after working at a large company in a couple years is that searching the web for lyrics is really popular. And we learned that, and we think we can make a company out of that. So we said, hey, this sounds like a great idea. Well, 50 people in the room thought it was a great idea too, and they swarmed these two CEOs, or the CEO and the founder, and said, hey, we want to give you our money. So we had to beg and plead for them to take our money, right? I mean, it seems like a crazy thing, but in 2011, it was, uh, it was, it was quite normal. So we called them, we emailed them, we, we showed up where they were about 17 times connecting with them before they allowed us to give them money, if you can believe that. So that is the opportunity that's in front of you guys here in the Bay Area, which is very unique. And I travel all around the world very frequently from Korea to Japan to Southeast Asia to the United Arab Emirates. And I, what I see at places just like this is that they all want to live in the Bay Area and have that exposure. So take advantage of it, get involved. You guys are here. You have smart parents that brought you here. Uh, it, this is a great place to be. Uh, a couple other companies. So I, I mentioned um, we, we have uh, Asian presence. We have uh, folks in Jakarta and Singapore. And we invest in a company called Tech in Asia, which if you don't um, already know about it, it's like the tech crunch of Southeast Asia. All news about startups and everything Asian startups. Uh, we've had some IPOs, we've had some exits in venture capital, that's, all, that's what we're about. So we find great pride in finding great startups, great entrepreneurs, great passion, and take them to initial public offering or uh, to an acquisition by a large corporate. We had an IPO on the Tokyo Stock Exchange, DLE, Flash Animation Company in Japan, and we have a couple more coming up. Where do we find these companies? Places just like this. So uh, Plug and Play, Y Combinator, as I mentioned, Techstars, What's really cool is that you guys live in this area where every night you can go to an event somewhere and pitch. A lot of them are free. A lot of them are two people with a laptop. And then you have an idea and, it's, and you're just looking for some funding or you're looking for some partners to help you. That's really unique and very cool about where you guys live. So I encourage you to get out to these events. Get involved. Go um, you know, your Saturday mornings, your Sundays, your Tuesday nights, and just be there. So. Uh, follow Mark. He seems like he, he knows what he's doing here. And, um, you know, surround yourself by successful people like that. So we co-invest with a lot of other VCs. Um, there's, I think, uh, maybe around 65 plus right now that we've co-invested with. So all the famous VCs, we come in as a strategic investor and really help open up companies to global markets. A couple of our general partners, um, one from Eastern Europe, one with a history of Japan. Uh, myself and then Kamal, who uh, I believe knows the folks at Plug and Play as well. He's in the uh, in our Dubai office, and then myself, who's here in San Francisco. There's our global presence, just so you guys know. And for the folks on the phone, we have uh, people all around the world. We feel that's very important when we take a company and we bring it to a new area of the world. Um, so for the folks in the room that have no idea how to get into Seoul, Korea, we make connections where you can get into the Amazon of Korea, which Amazon is not there yet. So now. Why I'm here is really for you guys to ask me questions, okay? So please, don't be shy. You guys have been very quiet, but go ahead. If you have a question, raise your hand. I'm happy to address it. If you want a story, let me know. Yes. Okay, yeah, great, great question. So the question, what advice can you give to a startup when you're pitching to a venture capitalist? So, no matter who you're pitching to, I would say you have to be passionate about it. So as George mentioned, find something you're passionate about. I, as a venture capitalist, study the person, study your body language, study what you're saying, and I look at you and I say, can you go fundraise past the round you're looking for right now? Because you, as a CEO or a founder, need to take this company to a Dropbox status, to a Google status. That's what we're looking for. So I look at the person and say, can you do that? And I know pretty quickly when I talk to an entrepreneur if that person is going to be able to go fundraise 100 million or 400 million or whatever it is. So, and I know the ones that, hey, maybe they've never done this before, they're uncomfortable. Um, just have the passion. And some of us, we're going to have to act and, and, and do it, but some of us, it's inherent. So, practice, number one, first and foremost. And as Saeed said, be prepared. 
So if you came here today and you looked up Phoenix Venture Capital on the website, you saw our 40 portfolio companies, you found out where we are, and you could ask a very relevant question, it makes yourself very relevant and it takes 10 minutes to do, but it, it shows your passion and your drive. So study, be prepared before you speak to a VC, and um, number one, do something you're excited about doing. Global Partners, sure. they wanted to know, um, are you relating to what was just asked, what are you looking for in the, not so much the pitch, but the company, the presentation um, that you see, especially knowing that here in the Silicon Valley, we are in an area where we have a lot of growth innovation around us, but maybe a company from Morocco or Moldova both of whom are global partners, mm -hmm. would have a different outlook on technology. Can, yeah. How do you factor that in? What do you look at when you have somebody present their new idea, their new company? Yep, that's a great question. So every part of the world, I focus on def many different areas of the world. And for instance, uh, when, you, when you are in a place like Morocco or Moldova or wherever you are, uh, most likely a lot of US companies are not there yet. And what I mean by that is there's no Amazon in Korea, if you can believe that. I mean, it's just not a big thing. There's seven other companies like that in Korea. In Morocco, they might not have um, the global distribution network like FedEx and UPS. Really, they might not. In the United Arab Emirates, it's Aramex. Have anybody ever used that? No. So uh, what, what's important is that you find something that is not in that country, and you really destroy that uh, idea in that country. And what I mean by that is take advantage of US corporates not being there. So. If there is no PayPal in Bangladesh, which there is not, there is an opportunity. And there's 250 million people there, big market as the US in terms of population. So number one, if you're in an area like that, don't focus on the US economy to, t to attack first, okay? You have to dominate your local market and then think about expansion into another place. So think about what isn't in that country today and then think about how can I localize that idea that maybe has worked in China or the US or Japan and taking that into my country and really developing it and making a great company. Yes. How, how many uh, women-led startups have we had in our portfolio? Is that right? So we have about 40 companies in our portfolio and that's a great question. I, uh, I'll tell you a funny story. So we, I was at the New York Venture Summit in uh, Manhattan two months ago or three months ago. And I was speaking on a stage like this to a room like this and I brought one of our CEO founders from Y Combinator to this event. She was the only woman there, really. I mean, she was, it was a sea of men. So the investor industry is very male dominated and that, that will change. Uh, from our portfolio, I think three or four companies are female-led CEOs, and they're probably some of our strongest. So we just invested in a company called Women.com. Has anybody ever heard of that? Okay. I encourage you to get on there if you're a female. If you're a male, sorry, you're not allowed. Um, but it's a really cool community to ask questions and, and talk. But um, some of our best companies are female CEOs. Um, so we have a handful, but we're always looking for more. Um, there's one I'm trying to get into and she won't take my calls because uh, she's already oversubscribed. So I think they're very, um, if you are female and you want to be a CEO and you're passionate about your idea, you, you go toe to toe with any male, if not a better, a better looking investment. Yeah. And sorry, just yeah, last, last question. question. Yep, go ahead. Yep, so um, I, what I recommend, if you're a junior, senior in high school, you're, you're looking at what college to go to, um, you can still go to events. And I think that's the most important thing because it's gonna make you very relevant no matter who you talk to when you go for an internship on your sophomore year of college or junior year. Oh, in the Bay Area, I used to go to this tech event at Plug and Play every Thursday night and I got to meet this guy. His name was Sergey, and all of a sudden he started Google eight years later when I graduated college, okay? So you know that person from years and years ago, get connected, get network, you know, network with people. Um, the easiest way is to not watch TV or go sit in front of your computer at night 
and talk to your friends about something that you know can wait. Um, the best thing to do is go to an event, socialize, um, get good at walking up to people and introducing yourself, shaking your hand with them and say, I'm really excited about what you're doing. Can you tell me more about your company? And just go to these events because right now you guys may or may not know it, but like I said before, is that this area is just ripe with events. You, you can go and look online and there's tons of events going on every night somewhere in the Bay Area that you can go to. But I would recommend doing that because it's a learning experience. They usually don't cost anything and you get to network with people that are going to start the next Google. Okay. Thanks for having me and uh, Mark, thank you so much for allowing me to uh, be here today and uh, good luck to everybody. Thanks.